Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. And today let's talk about making rings. From time to time in the school shop I had a need for rings that I was going to use in a project for whatever reason. And so we made a lot of them. And I'm going to show you a couple different techniques for doing that by hand and by power. Even though you'll never need to make a ring. In fact, you can buy these at Ace Hardware. They're welded rings in various sizes. So there must be somewhat of a demand, you know, if they actually sell them commercially. You can make them uh, different diameters, different diameter wire and all that. And, you know, I got some other samples here that I have in my box. At the high school, I had a wooden crate from the United States government that had 100,000 of these rings in there. And uh, you can see they're split. Where's the split here? Yeah, they're split. These were... <laughs> rings for grenades left over from the Second World War. They must have made billions of them because, you know, I had a hundred thousand and I'd use some of them but I didn't even begin to dent that box and I couldn't let the kids just get in there or you'd find them all around the school in the halls, you know, they'd, they'd steal them uh, without a purpose and then throw them and things like that so you had to keep stuff locked up. So let me start by saying that in a recent video, but maybe the video isn't even out yet, I don't know, it depends on when this video is released, I made these torsion springs for a sander that is going to be made in a future video. Now if you're watching this five years from now, this is uh, July of 2020, you know, some of my timelines here won't make any sense to you, but I wound these uh, by hand. I did attempt and there's a video on that. I, I guess I said that. I did attempt to wind them on the lathe with a modicum of success, but it's kind of dangerous because this is piano wire. It is music wire. It's kind of dangerous. So let me show you how to do it by hand, although this is pretty obvious. Okay, this is a piece of 330 seconds filler rod, you know, for welding. And you got to count on there being some waste at the beginning and the end. But this is fairly cheap. So I'm just going to wrap it around an inch and an eighth and then I might try the three-quarter too just for a change. You've got to have some way to start. Now you can drill a hole in there and thread the wire through to hold it. But i got a vice grips here and I'm just going to run that up against the vice. And it might be out of uh, your view. But I'm just going to start wrapping this around like this. And of course this is hitting the wall so it's and there will always be some spring back, so these rings will be larger in diameter than what the mandrel is. And you want to try to keep them tight around one another. Yeah, I've got all kinds of interference there on the bench. So it's really easy to do with small wire and there it is. Also note that I have a problem here keeping them together. You'd like to have them uh, tied up uh, and I'll show you how to do that on the lathe. But this is a method and then to make rings of course you're just cutting them apart. That's 330 seconds. Now you probably can get uh, some success up to eighth inch or maybe not 316. I wouldn't try 316. And you might want to wear gloves when you do that. This is actually a failure. You know, it looks kind of like a mess. We'd like to have them nice and tight like that. Next, this is 1 8 inch stainless steel rod. Why stainless? Why am I using stainless? Simply because I got 100 pounds of it. And I don't mind wasting it, but probably it's fairly expensive. I don't really know. This is a 7 8 mandrel, and I'm at the closing lathe, and I'm going to run the machine in reverse and very slow speed, which is uh, back gears. This is going to be 52 RPM is what it is. And you can do this simply by holding the wire. And I used to do that at the high school. I didn't really want the kids to do it. Probably wear leather gloves, but gloves are dangerous. I'm not recommending it because you, it can pull you in, it can get caught. So don't do this at home. Just This is just for the fun of it. All right. So I'm going to use power feed. And since this is eighth inch rod, there will be eight turns in an inch, 
which means that's eight, like eight threads per inch. Again, I want to, I'll be running in reverse because that way I can watch this wrap around the mandrel. If you do it in forward, it's down here and you can't really see so much what's happening. You don't want to do this on a lathe that has a threaded spindle because it will unscrew, it might unscrew the chalk, uh, the chalk you know, and then what do you got? You got a mess and you got damage and you got danger. So don't run it in reverse. This is a, not a threaded spindle. A lot, this is a long taper, a key type spindle. All right, how am I going to hold this or get it started? I'm just going to, again, I don't care how much I waste. You could drill a hole in there. That'd be the better way. But uh, I'm just going to bend it into an L shape and stick it in the chuck. But let me show you another thing. Instead of holding it here, I have made real quickly, and this is left from that other project, this is just a piece of cold roll steel held in a tool holder. It's quarter inch. It's larger than what I need for this job, but I think it'll still do pretty well. And I'll have that perhaps an inch away from the uh, the mandrel. And I will, as far as the height of it, I'm going to have the height so that the wire will rest right on the mandrel. Are you following that at all? Clear as mud? So I bent the wire as you can see. I'm just going to put that in there up against the chuck and then I'm ready to wind. And this is the same as winding a spring. And remember the stainless steel is rather springy compared to mild steel. So the diameter of the, uh, the ring here will be undetermined. I don't know what it will be. So sometimes you have to use trial and error to, if you are uh, interested in an accurately sized ring of a certain size. So, all right, let me move the camera and get a better view. All right, let's see what happens. And the, the machine is all ready to go. So when I turn it on, the, the half nut is engaged and it's going to take right off at eight threads per inch in reverse, slow speed. And it's better to have a lathe that has a clutch so you can turn it off real quickly without turning the switch off and then having some coasting going on. You don't know what's going to happen if you've never done this before. Yeah, don't do this. It's dangerous. All right, let's go. was that? Now I'm going to continue and let it feed right out and it's going to explode a little bit. I'm going to stand back and see what happens. said some waste on each end. Let's step it up a notch. This is 316 stainless steel. Again, only because I got tons of it. That's 0.187 thousand. So if you do the math, that comes to about five and a half threads per inch in my uh, gearbox setting so that it advances correctly, but it's not exactly. In fact, I'll be moving uh, for five uh, for yeah, for the wraps I will be moving 1.028 rather than an inch. So again, I've got this bent. And I'm just sticking it in the chuck there to jam it. And I am engaging off camera, you can't see this. The half nut lever, the clutch is engaged and I'm going to flip it on. It'll be automatic, but I step back a little bit. This is scary. All right, in reverse, slow speed. Let's go. I'm going to let it go all the way through and see what happens. Great. Boy, oh, that really warmed up too. A lot of friction forcing those molecules. Notice that it's a little bit larger, probably about one inch inside. 
metal will always spring back. This is fun. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you enjoy your tools. I hope you enjoy your machines and your shop and stay away from uh, uh, television and you know other nonsense in life and just you know we, it's fun isn't it? All right I'm gonna do one more size although I'm killing the uh, I'm beating a dead horse here. We'll, we'll use a quarter inch mild steel. Again I happen to have a bunch of that and it's about 30 inch so I'm just using whatever length I've got. If you only need a couple wraps, of course, just use what, what is necessary. The setup is about the same. A bend right here. Just something to, to keep it stationary right here. Now this uh, holder I have here is quarter inch. This is originally the size that I, I made it for. So you could put some oil in there too if you needed to. If there's too much friction or you're going to do a lot of this. But it kind of makes a mess. So... Again, I'm engaging the half nut lever, the clutch, and all I have to do is flip it into reverse. Perhaps you see now why I'm running the machine in reverse, the beautiful view that you get. Did you notice I left a little more room here? This is mild steel, cold drawn steel. Here we go. That's a little scary when it thwaps like that. I should have stopped it and I would have been in more control. This wrapped pretty tight, so that's a pretty true inside diameter. All right, shall we take it out? Let's go over to the bench and summarize this thing. I've never made rings that are larger than a quarter inch in diameter, but I suppose you could go up to 5 16 or 3 8 but that's uh, not what I'm going to do in this video. Now to make these into usable rings what I always did was to either take a bolt cutter and cut them but it was better to saw them and I would sometimes use a hand hacksaw. Well this is stainless steel and stainless is always tough. Let's try this nipper. A little side cutter isn't going to work. That's the waste stock. And then you could cut it off every revolution. I don't know how accurate we are with this. But see, there's a ring, and that has to be closed. I didn't cut it close enough. I think that sawing is a better alternative because when I close that in a vise or something, it's not going to be truly round. You know it isn't. Let's try it again. There, that's a little better. Now I'd put it in the vise with a wrench and just pull it over and it would close nicely. This one still had some of the bad bend in it, so that's all waste stock. Let's try a larger one. I'll try cutting the waste stock off first. Now those could be welded together if necessary or spread apart even more than this one to install something, a pin or whatever you might want this to go into. If you go larger than say 5 16 you probably will want to heat the metal red hot and then it'll wrap real easily.
Well, there it is. That's how you make rings if you ever need to, or you can go to Ace Hardware and buy them and save yourself the trouble. And this is really uh, an area of metalworking that in the schools we call bench metal, although I did use a machine. But generally in bench metal, you're limited to maybe a grinder and a drill press. Everything else done with hand tools at the bench vise. So this is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Hope you liked the video and be sure and watch my 1200 other shop videos. And check out my video courses and one of my promos if you have machine tools. I have one on the Bridgeport Mill, the Logan Lathe, the South Bend Lathe, Foundry, and the Atlas Craftsman Lathe. So long for now.